What we can't allow to happen are any barriers to people enjoying the game of football that we all love. Homophobia means bigotry, it means rejection, and to me that has no place in football. If football is truly going to be for all, we have to embrace everybody. There's no reason why anybody should not feel welcome within football. Gods of race, key, creed, colour, sex, gender, everyone should be welcomed in the game, and I don't think they are at the moment. Homophobia and bigotry is unacceptable and should not be tolerated. The FA, the football authorities and the football community at large has an important role to play in tackling this issue. A good place to start is to talk about it. There are people still within football who have some quite old-fashioned attitudes um, which means that they would not be particularly welcoming. It's become an ingrained part of what football is about, just people expressing themselves very naturally without actually understanding that what they're saying is hurtful, using the terminology that is abusive towards gay and lesbian and transgender people without even thinking about it. And so I think for, for me and the work that I do with Kick It Out, it is about getting people to understand the sensitivity of the under hurtfulness and dealing with the ignorance that's associated with, with being who we are. Lesbian, gay, bisexual people and trans people generally perceive, I think, football to be unsafe and unwelcoming. I was involved in professional football for 20, over 20 years and um, the subject was hardly ever discussed or um, uh, and I, I certainly wasn't aware or conscious of playing with any gay players um, and yet statistically that, that can't be the case. Homophobia in football is an attitude. It's an attitude that creates barriers for LGB and T people to safely take part in the game, free from discrimination and free to enjoy the sport. Homophobia uh, is preventing you know, talented people, a, a broad pool of people from accessing the game and that's just simply not acceptable. People need to make sure uh, that when it is tackled it's taken seriously and of course the media have a role in that too and we are seeing and have seen in recent months an increasing inclination even among commentators where you might not expect it to say that actually enough's enough we can't go on isolating a whole community from the game. Until we have uh, a large percentage of people within our game able to proudly proclaim their sexual orientation rather than conceal it, we're failing. Those of us who have got gay or lesbian friends will, will, will tell you, you know, what's the big deal? And I sometimes think a lot of these um, prejudice and fears are based on just that, on fear. Since I came out, I've had no forms of open discrimination to my face. What people say behind my back, of course, I can't say, but uh, I personally haven't. But I've been very fortunate. Um, I do know, obviously, that uh, um, at grassroots level, such incidents do take place. I'm hopeful that the plan of action will help to eradicate that for the, for the next generation. Well, I think, um, as with any forms of abuse from the terraces, um, chanting is, is, um, is something that supporters think is banter or, or, or think is amusing um, but when you're on the receiving end of it and you can't react or respond then um, then it's not quite so amusing. There's a feeling that um, there is a group of people here who are not welcome. The way players behave on the pitch, the way the clubs respond to those players very much affects how attitudes are on the terraces. I've um, been on the receiving end of um, abuse from players, um, opposing fans. When I was at Sheffield Wednesday, the Sheffield United fans were just all singing a certain song. Um, and yeah, opposing players, calling you certain things on the pitch, which in one case led to a scuffle in the tunnel at the end of the game, because I think probably I was tired of it. Confronted the player, there was a scuffle. We both ended up in the referee's room with the beach manager. Um, a quick chat, a handshake, uh, see you later, and that was it. You know, I've played with 
uh, players that maybe other people in the team said, oh, I wonder if that the, the guy, you know, we've never seen him with a girlfriend, is he gay? Um, they've debated about it around the dinner table perhaps or, or when they've been out socially. Um, but I don't actually think it would have changed their attitude towards that person at all. There's a perception that it would, um, but I don't believe that would be the case. Goodness me, there are enough things that teammates let go <laughs> in other <laughs> cycles that, um, um, that I don't see that a, that a player's sexuality would actually make any difference at all. I can imagine that a lot of people don't get involved in the game because of the fear of, of if you like, being outed or being discriminated again, and that must be quite a scary place. There are one or two professional clubs I know who do this now, football for everyone. Um, up, one example, Arsenal for all. And people do go and start to feel comfortable because the authorities are saying, you are welcome, we won't stand for any abuse uh, of any kind against people, whatever their characteristic, and I think that's what football has to do, has to open up and be very welcoming to everyone, whatever their background. The regulations around homophobia need to be enforced. I think they, the regulations exist to be able to tackle it, but I think there needs to be a greater emphasis on encouraging people to report, making people feel safe that they can report, educating people about what they should be reporting. The role of the FA is, I think, to act as a leader in this area. We have a whole series of stakeholders who have an important role to play as well. I think by aggregating all of that fantastic work and being more visible about what we do and how we do it, we can actually make a real difference. What we're pleased about at the moment is the FA has finally said these are specific issues, they need specific understanding, they need to be addressed at all levels of the game, and that means the professional game as well as the amateur game, and we're determined to do it. What we need to do as governing bodies and stakeholders within the game is, is to create an atmosphere to actually provide the environment whereby should a player decide that he wants to come out that there is a, a good and appropriate support mechanism that's actually there for him. I think we in football have learned a lot from other sports and I think there were a lot of lessons we could learn from the cricket authorities in the way that they handled that situation to actually ensure that the message got out there but it wasn't ever out there in a, in a way that was detrimental in any way to the player concerned. We need to educate an entire workforce as to the dangers of discriminating against huge um, parts of our population. We would actually say, if you hear this sort of thing, we don't want it in our game, take that responsibility and report it, and then we, as a, as a game, can all come together and stamp this out. The key thing to helping people on the front line, in my view, is confidence. We have to give people confidence that we're serious about tackling this issue and also if they report concerns that they're acted upon in a robust and visible manner and the plan makes it very clear that that's what we intend to do. One of our corporate goals is about delivering football for everyone um, in a positive environment. It's about getting more LGBT players, um, coaches, referees, people into the game and making sure that um, in mainstream football they're provided with a safe and positive environment and if they're not then um, making sure they've got the confidence and the knowledge to report that and that that will be dealt with. We need to create an environment where it's safe for players to play. For me, the all barriers perceived or real to people participating in the game, enjoying the game, playing the game, coaching the game, must be removed. I think you would have to be very, very brave to be an openly gay player in today's game. There are macho elements of our game which I do not like, uh, and we've got to change. And once we change and we get down the road of it doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight or from any sexual orientation whatsoever, you are welcome within our game and it has no bearing on your place in the team when you're worth as a football player. And we've got to get to that change in our culture and we've got to get there in a way that it's sustainable. Attitudes to gay people playing in the game I think can be changed if through that education process they can be seen as just other players. What success would really look like is when gay players in the Premier League feel able to come out. Football is tribal and we welcome the rivalry, a good healthy rivalry between, between teams. But there are things you can use in that rivalry, there are things you can't use. You can't use race. I think most people know that now. We need to make sure they know they can't use homophobia as well.
eventually we'll see homophobia eradicated from the English game and that everybody from wherever they're drawn and whatever their sexual orientation will feel confident to come and play this great game.